Hey everybody, welcome back to season two of the Two Cents Podcast. This is Ari Ben Shushan with my brother Yossi Ben Shushan, and we're going to be speaking about Covidential. In this podcast, we're going to get through all the different times of COVID, exactly how reality has changed, exactly how our outlook perhaps has become a little bit brighter or dimmer according to how the world has literally changed around us. It's going to be a really great episode. I love this one. Um, lots in it for you, and it's just great to be back. So we'd like to thank our wonderful sponsors who brought us back. That would be the ZCK Foundation and, of course, Yad La'achem. We're going to reintroduce Yad La'achem a little bit later on in the episode, but right now, here it comes. Season 2, Two Cents Podcast is on its way. Enjoy. Hi everybody, this is Ari Ben Shushan. And this is Yassi Ben Shushan. And this is the Two Cents Podcast. Brought to you and powered by Meaningful Minute. Welcome back, everybody. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yassi, no chance. There was no chance that we <laughs> that we were gonna get a second season out of this. No. I, I mean we tried to. The the plan the plan in the beginning was very very simple. In order to get everyone to just we were gonna do one season and then they would see like oh oh that was enough of that that was enough of that now both of you go to your corners <laughs> right and just and you'd never talk again. Think about what you've done. I mean the bigger evil plan that we had was is that we both get thrown out of like anywhere so we can finally just. Move back to her to stroll, you know, go just just go back into a little corner of the world. And that's it. And once in a while people would recognize him like, oh, oh, you're the guys who just had that one season. And that right. was perfect. Bro, yeah. My burka would have taken us back. Yeah, that would have been great. And we could have just But instead, I don't know. Right. I guess that Gamar and Sanhedrin of you know, the Times of Mashiach of the Mashiach. How just chutzpah yazga, and that uh, things just going to be crazy. Yeah, who knew? Up. Yes, who knew we were part of history? <laughs> <laughs> Baruch Hashem. Uh, no, uh, it's okay, really, yeah. it's really great to be back. We'd like to thank Meaningful Minute. You know, first and foremost, show this Akar Satayv. Thank you very much, Hanachi Gordon. Thank you very much to Meaningful right. Minute. Um, thank you very, very much to all of our listeners. Um, it's really been. What an experience. Um, emails, right. uh, people galore. Yas and I did um, Shavuot together, um, and we right. actually had so many people who came up to us talking about how much they enjoyed, talking how much uh, they've learned. Um, a lot of people who <laughs> would come up to them to be like, when I'm not in the mood of like learning anymore, so we listen to you guys. <laughs> yeah, the same thing. Interestingly enough, I think more than any other, uh, you do more stuff than I do, but... More than any other thing that that I'm involved in, like I think nowadays the um, especially after pick up momentum, like after the end of the season, nowadays I think the, one of the most things I got stopped about, spoken about, or like you know uh, complimented on, or is is the podcast. Oh. Um, you know, I didn't know that many people were on the app, and then I realized that probably not that many people are on the app. They're just getting it somewhere else. Um, but get it on the app first. That's yeah. where it comes out first. A hundred percent. Anywhere else. I'm I'm still shocked. The meaningful minute app. I'm still shocked. I keep talking like everyone knows what I'm right, saying. The it's app. the meaningful minute app. Right. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm still shocked. Certain students of mine or certain people out here, you know, on the West Coast, um, I really want this to become a thing over here. Just go to your app store. It's very simple. Just put in the words meaningful minute, the app will pop up. And um, okay. You know, we're not even pushing ourselves with this. This is the funny part. We're not even pushing our own podcast with this because the moment you get onto that app, I feel you're going to be so oh, taken. You owe us money. You owe us money. If we're the ones who introduced you to this app just now, you owe us yeah, money. Yeah, that would right be nice. Now. But, 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 yes, but, 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, so many speakers, so many people um, giving off not just an influence of Tyra, but an influence of a Torah hashkafa, an influence of a Torah life, an influence right. of really being connected to the Abishta. Uh, stuff right. for Emuna, stuff for Bitachan, stuff uh, just if you're feeling down, uh, stuff to really, really put a big smile on your face. And uh, you have the Meaningful People podcast over there. And our podcast comes out there a good few days, so almost a week uh, beforehand. Yeah. 
So definitely you, go get that app. I'm gonna tell you my favorite, my favorite, my two favorite parts of the app is number one, uh, the notes. That that feature that you can write notes on what's being said and like it saves to your part of the or like your profile, whatever it is, is awesome. And then Ari, if you want to know my other, what's your other one? Yeah, I do want to know. Do you want to know my other favorite part? <laughs> the second of your two favorites. The second of my two favorites. It's actually my first of my two favorites. Is and oh, yes, I hold on, you were going part. backwards. This is my first. Yeah, I was counting down. Oh, I didn't know. Okay. <laughs> yes, you mentioned Sean's top two favorite. At the parts top two, the starting that. that was two. No, the people don't know. People were writing game. this down. I that was a good. One. Okay. I that was a good one. And your top favorite, <laughs> y'all see. <laughs> What's your top For favorite? Trivia. <laughs> um, my my favorite is this summer. I I got. I thought it was gonna be. You know, the summer's only two months. I don't know if you know that. And and it was. It flew by. And uh, Tisha Buff just sort of jumped on me. I didn't. I didn't realize that uh, it was coming that fast. And. It was basically two days before Tisha B'Av, and I was like, I'm not ready for Tisha B'Av. Just the way my summer's going, I'm like, I'm not ready for Tisha B'Av. I'm like, I got to start learning something. And I did the the go-to. I picked up, you know, Book of Our Heritage. I would, I started doing my rounds through the Gemaras and everything. But then I opened up the app, and everything was like right there. Because wow. that's what everyone's going to be talking about right then, because it's all, it's all new. It's all right then. My life was changed in like 20 minutes on that app. Wow. Of Tisha B'Av. It was amazing. Wow. Great, great Go material. Back. Get it. Right. Yeah. Um, my favorite part um, is certainly being able to go back and forth with people. Uh, I like that a lot. I like when I put up a post or something and people compliment. Uh, it's <laughs> okay. Who, who, it's who, good. No, I'm not going to. Gonna... Who yeah. put you up to saying it? I want to know. No, I enjoy. Because Nahi definitely told you to say that. I enjoy. So that I get the guilty conscience. I have not responded to a single person. Very good. Yeah, see, okay. I'm just saying I enjoy what Nahi enjoys. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm saying it for real. It, it, it really is nice. Um, when I put up something and people go and they say just something, like oh, they'll ask a question or just saying thanks or they appreciated that. Um, I don't know. I just, it brings a very human element to it. Uh, so I just right. really like that. Yeah. Okay. So any, any out guys, definitely hit up that meaningful minute app. Let's get a lot more people on it and let's jump into this episode. Yes. Because we let's definitely have, in. we definitely have a lot, a lot to talk about. Um, this one has been named, this one, uh, has been named covidential. So it's, oh no, yes. He's not understanding it. It's the word covid Dential instead of yeah. If you want to know what Rabbi Ari did for the good part of his summer, <laughs> I just it was come up with names for the episodes. You know, Nahi Semi's like names for episodes. Unfortunately, this was the first one that came up, and then I gave up. I only have one name for <laughs> all the. Know, you know, there was no you cl- <laughs> couldn't get better than that. You capped too early. Next you episode is gonna early. be called Covenantial Two. I mean, like, how else am I gonna you get better up, than that? You came up with it too early, too quickly. That yep. was the problem. Yeah, but Covenantial. Um, let me tell you what we're not going to be talking about in Covidential. We're not going to be talking about COVID. <laughs> That's right. for sure. Right. That was the agreement. Right. The, the, the understanding over here is, is that we will not be talking about um, times of COVID. We're not going to be talking about sadness of COVID. Um, the reason why I'm calling it Covidential is because I want to talk about um, the day after. I want to talk about the rebuild. I want to talk about um, what our attitudes are meant to be. Um, just right now, we're filming this in uh, the beginning of the school year time of uh, the 2021 to 2022 school year. And it's a new feeling. It's a new feeling for everybody. Um, uh, we're filming this around Rosh Hashanah time. This is going to hit, uh, this is going to hit the stores a little bit later, but uh, no, yeah, yeah. yeah, no, but I'm just saying that that's what's in the air. Meaning like the feeling of change now is in the air. So I just really wanted to talk about uh, the concept of change, the concept of growing now. And this is certainly not something that is relegated to this time of the year. Uh, this is going to be something that is going to be for the entire time, every single day of a Jew's life. Certainly, uh, this is going to have a very strong part of that. So let's get into it. Um, in my mind, I don't think we're allowed to be the same anymore, Yes. In my yeah. mind, uh, and now a lot of people were saying this during the time, and a lot of people were committing themselves during the time, during COVID itself. But now that, I'm not going to say COVID has passed, uh, there's still the Delta thing and all that stuff and everything else, but 
Lamaisa. No matter what you say, no matter what you would have said, you were going to upset somebody. No, uh, if you say it's here, you're going to upset someone, and if you say it's it's past, you're going to upset someone. Right. So it's not, but the but the difference now is that we're learning to live with it. You know, Baruch Hashem, our schools are open. You know, we're all going to shuls. You know, we're learning to live with it, and Mm. I just feel like I am completely a different person from 2000. 19 early 2020 that Hashem doesn't want me to be the same Hashem doesn't want my outlooks to be the same and I don't think we're ever meant to go back to 2019 like the way things were I think we're supposed to take certain lessons over here and really build ourselves and I really wanted to kind of get into these ideas and get into these concepts. So do you want to kick off like any ideas you have? I, 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 I think I think I tried I think that was the plan because, because no one knew, right? We didn't know. Like, going in, I remember even giving Shurim, like, this, the, my message. I'll be open about this. I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. My message changed from the beginning. But I, I don't think there's anything to be embarrassed about over there. I wasn't going back on myself. I was just saying my message changed because I think the whole situation changed. I mean, yes, Whereas I, I remember like your... We were going can, in. Can I say your message in the beginning, which I loved and a lot of people messaged me about, but it was a time-bound message, which was at the time, your initial message was, stop looking at the news. You remember that? Like, like, right. No, so that had to do with that. But the messages will evolve along with it. So go ahead. I'm sorry. So, yeah. It, it, and they had to because initially, I, it, you know, I, I'm about to say it now. I mean, I think everyone's a little bit embarrassed about however, how, how, whatever side, whatever you did in the beginning, it was wrong. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. But yeah. let's well, say. We, you know, but, we call it pulling a Fauci is, 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 is what we call it. <laughs> <laughs> Not to get political. Is, not to get political. Not, not by no. the way, because both of us still are not really sure who that is, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> we just know it's good joke material. That's so it. We and so we that. just know you can end the joke that way, you know, yeah. with that there at so the end. So when I, when I first went into, um, when, when, when everyone first went into to quarantine, I, I was feeling like, you know, enjoy this time and grow from it, but don't let it change you. You know, th- don't let this change you. Life's going to get back to normal. Don't let this change you. Don't let this change you. I think one of the biggest things that I think personally, but to all my tell me them and in my own personal relationships in, in my, is like, I think you hit the nail on the head when you said it, like, Hashem was like, no, no, this is here for you to change. This is here for you to become bigger. And there was no room to stay the same. There wasn't. That need, I think, is one of, not, not the biggest, but is a tremendous issue with, that I had within myself, and I think people have in general, which is that if you get into a fight with someone, you get into an argument, someone hurts you, someone betrays you, someone does something, and, and you get hurt, our goal immediately, or our first question is, are we ever going to be, get, be able to get back to where we were, or is this relationship over? That, that's the immediate human reaction. And I think it's, I think what COVID taught me more than anything was that's so wrong. That's so wrong. So, you know, you remember in, uh, I think it's how, how to win, fun, win friends and influence people, I think, uh, where he says the, the story about the CEO who has an employee in some financial firm, investment firm, and the guy lost like a million dollars on a deal. And he comes in, he tenders his resignation. I might be getting a little bit of the story wrong, but he tenders his reg- resignation. He says, you know, I can't continue working for you. I just, I, I realize my mistake. And I, and the CEO ripped up the resignation and he said, let me get this straight. I just invested a million dollars in educating you and you think I'm letting you work for the competition down the block? You have to be out of your mind, right? So when we go through something, it doesn't matter how hurtful it is or how... When we go through something with another person, and definitely within ourselves, within our families, within life, and our goal is to now be the way we were beforehand, you miss the point. The point is you just invested pain. You just invested hurt. You just invested fighting. You just invested so much to come out the other side. How are you coming out the other side the same? It, it's not a, it shouldn't be our goal, but, but I think as human beings, we're just, it's where we go to. But we need, but but for me, that's what COVID taught me is that everything is an opportunity to come out the other side bigger and and greater. And yeah, sometimes the thing is is something like something as scary as something like a COVID or you know whatever it is. 
But the point is, is to is to come out the other side closer, bigger, not not the same as you were. Right. Don't protect who you are now by sacrificing who you're going to be tomorrow. Very good. Hey, everybody. So thrilled to be doing another season of Two Cents with my brother Yossi. But I got to tell you, there's so much more going on. You need to download that Meaningful Minute app right away ASAP. You got to do this schnell, as they say in Yiddish. You got to do this right away because there's bonus content and there's so much more content that both Rabbi Yossi and I put up, but there's so much more. I mean, you got to see Rabbi Majeski. I mean, you got to go out there, see Charlie Harari. There's an entire world in that Meaningful Minute app that's going to bring you closer to the Abishta. So please, right now, get that app, download it, and really enjoy becoming so much closer to Hashem. Now, I know a lot of people, uh, I'm going to get emails, you're going to get emails about this afterwards saying that, well, I didn't learn anything from COVID. You know, people are going to say that. Um, I believe that there is a wax on, wax off concept that people don't even get. Um, Let me just explain that to the crowd, uh, what that Ben Shushan vernacular means. Wax on, wax (laughs) off is, um, I mean, mean, it's obvious. It's when Mr. Miyagi, um, when the, uh, the, uh, who's Mr. Miyagi? The trainer, uh, he was training this kid to learn a kung fu. How much? How far am I going to go for this, Yassi? I know, but it was 1982. It was 1982. It was actually, yes, it's where it's where I live now. It's where TJ lives. Actually, it's down in Tarzana, uh, where that right. happened. Okay, this is spending way too much time on this. Um, of where the kid had to learn how to where to put his hands and how to block and fight. <laughs> doing the motions for everybody listening on the app i'm literally doing the emotions right now and he had to learn how to wax on and wax off had to put the wax onto the hood of the car had to take the wax off of the hood of the car and um he didn't think he was learning anything but then afterwards um he found out that that was a placement of his hands for uh whatever he was trying to learn with kung fu to block certain things okay oh i got through that um, wow thank you very much <laughs> if you're back after the edit right now <laughs> right? <laughs> welcome back um, i don't know if you realize but halfway through that muscle somebody handed me a gatorade and said you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna need this for the marathon you're running to get to the other side of this <laughs> So um, here we are at the end of this muscle. And what that means is basically is that you've learned certain things in COVID that you didn't realize has been put into the subliminal conscious of your mind um, in caring for people, in understanding what is worth and what is valuable to you. Um, there have been certain ideas that literally have been stamped inside us with children uh, a lot, uh, with so many teenagers uh, I think that they appreciate school now a little bit more. Like I'm, I'm seeing that now uh, that people are happy to be back in school. Um, people are a little bit more thoughtful with each other. I'm, I'm seeing that. Honestly, we still have to be cognizant though of that. Like we still have to build ourselves towards it. And, and I want to explain it this way. The Gemara in Sanhedrin, no, take that back. The Gemara in Yuma, I'm sorry. The Gemara in Yuma has a very fascinating take. The Gemara Yuma talks about that at the destruction of the first Beit HaMikdash, Daniel goes and says, Where is your power? He saw Hashem's house burn to the ground. He saw Nebuchadnezzar come, destroy it. He saw Nebuchadnezzar kill tens of thousands of Kohanim, 90 kavim of children's brains on a rock. I mean, you know, he saw the worst that any human being could possibly ever imagine. And when he saw that happen and the good guys didn't win, when he saw that the house just burned and heaven just shrugged, he couldn't take it anymore. And Daniel looked up to Shemaim and Daniel said, Aye Gvura Tacha. Where is your Gvura? Where is your Giba? Where's your might? He said, You know what, Hashem? I'm done with your Giba. I don't believe it's there. And he took it out of Tfila. He took it out of Tfila. He said, I'm done calling you Giba. Now, we're talking about Daniel over here, right? Uh, yeah, he went and took it out of... And a lot of people are still raging, and very many rightfully so, from saying to Hashem, Aye rachamanu techa. Aye chasidecha. Where is your compassion? Where is your mercy? Aye tikvatenu. Where is our hope? A lot of people... I'm talking now about making Hashem our king and that everything before Rosh Hashanah time, but making Hashem our king is something we do all the time. 
HaMelech HaKadosh, we say every single day. And I've had people in the crowds just saying to me, I don't feel like Hashem is really giving me everything good. I don't, I don't feel them. Back in 2019, I was, I was skippy with Hashem. I was so happy with Hashem. I would have given you the shir on Emunah. I would have given you the shir on Bitachon. I would have felt that I have so much hope. I would have felt I have so much security in Hashem. I would have felt that everything that Hashem does is, of course, for the best. Because I had stories about it. Because I saw the good guy win. COVID taught us the good guys don't always win. And we're still reeling from it. It's not like we can put up a memorial yet. We're still rolling with these punches and it still hurts. And if anything, it's hurting more. And so people now are coming back and they're just yelling at what Daniel yelled. Aye gevura techa. Where is your power, Hashem? You want me to make your, but where's your compassion? I mean, really? Tens of thousands of good people, then hundreds of thousands of good people. And now the numbers keeps on going and going of, of people they're gone and we're all suffering and we have no idea what tomorrow holds. We don't feel safe. We don't feel secure. We don't feel that there's a God who loves me running the show right now. I don't feel that. So Rabbi Ben Shushan, Rabbi Yossi Ben Shushan, honestly, you're saying what you're supposed to learn from COVID to pick yourself like up and something new. But right now I'm reeling from this. Right now, I just can't. And I just want to say, Yassi, the next part of the Gemara really hit me strong with this. The next part of the Gemara to me is beautiful. The Anchi Knesset Hagadayla comes along. And the Anchi Knesset Hagadayla says, we're putting the word Giba right back into Tefillah. How? They said, Daniel, you were alive when Hashem was doing open miracles to the world. And so obviously... You saw fire coming down to the Beit HaMikdash every single day. You saw Hashem doing open miracles with all of humanity. So you were expecting lightning to come out from Shemaim and absolutely destroy all the bad guys. And so, yeah, it makes sense when that didn't happen for you that you would say, where is your power? But then, then things changed. Right after that, right after the first Beit HaMikdash came the story of Purim. And that's it. Haman got up and Haman said to everybody, Hashem is old and tired. He left. According to certain Midrashim, Haman is the one who actually who killed Daniel. Um, Daniel was the go-between uh, from Mordechai and Esther. And some say that he actually got killed. When it comes to what they were living through, the Anshik Nesad Agadola now, what they were going through, Anshik Nesad Agadola said, now Hashem is hidden. We don't see Hashem's. Now it's hidden miracles. Now Hashem is hiding. Right. Hashem's gibar right. is now something completely different. His gibar is... Hashem is holding himself back. Ezeu Gibar, Kovish at Yitzro, who is a Gibar who can hold himself back. Hashem could destroy people sinning, destroy the nations around us who are hurting us, and Hashem shows his Gibar by holding himself back. Yes, I brought this whole thing in just one thing. If we're yelling out, where are you, Hashem? Where is your strength? Where is your power? Where is your compassion? I think Hashem is telling us in the world, there's been a change, and now you have to find it differently. And now you have to do that in a completely different way. Right. Right. That's, uh, I, that's, that's something that the world now has to really stand up and take note of. Things are different. Yes, right. it used to be that our Amuna, what were Amuna stories? Amuna stories until now were, ha, da, 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 and oh, and now I understand why Hashem right. did it. Okay. We don't have that anymore. Hello, everybody, and we're going to bring back this episode in a minute of Covidential, but I got to tell you what is going on in Yad La'achem. Yes, you know, I are super pumped that we have the huge chos to speak to our very good friend. You know, we got to know him in between season one and season two, and we're coming back now. So we got to know the world, not just of Yad La'achem, but the world of the San Gans. And that, my friends, is a world. And I want to introduce you back to this world. Reb Nisano, welcome, welcome. Good to, me, good to have you back. It's a real schuss to be here with the Ari Yossi. Thank you for the kind introduction. You know, this episode, you said, it's called Covidential. And the Allah and work that we do is confidential. But of course, we need your help. And we're glad to be part of it. I must say that this is season two. And season one, so many of the Two Cent listeners came out and gave really beyond, there's this thing that what was expected, but 
more than I would have thought so. They helped rescue a family, and hopefully this year will rescue two because it's season two. And you mentioned the word wor- the word world saveaworld.org. That's the website that people are using to help save a family. So, so for those that don't know, the brief introduction is the Yad Achim helps rescue Jewish women and children that are trapped in our villages. Real pidgin shvuyim work. Most of the work that we do is really in prevention, helping to make sure they don't end up there, as well as education, whether it's in seminaries or in schools throughout Israel or the 21 social workers we have that speak with girls on a day-to-day basis. And unfortunately, this problem is not one that affects only the non from We have from the biggest Rebbe's grandchildren to kids to Rosh Hashiva's children. Unfortunately, it affects so many people. And these people are trapped. And you have to help save their lives. So that's why we're here. You know, by COVID, people understand the concept of what it means to be trapped at home, right? A little bit. A little bit. Some people, places were locked down. In Australia, you're still locked down. So you're able to help save people's lives. Wow. So, Re- yeah. Rev. Nassanel, Rev. Nassanel, can I just jump in and ask you over here? Because something you just mentioned is very, very crazy to me. So, really, we don't know how many lives Yad Lacham has really saved because you're also into preventative measures of making sure that it doesn't happen, educating kids, educating people in ensuring that they don't get ensnared in this to begin with. Is that correct? That's for sure. Yeah. There's, you always say you can't put headlines today. 300 women did not end up in Arab village. But also, like you said, even right. when you rescue somebody, you don't know their future generation generations and generations that are being saved so i really want to i really want to urge the people so, yeah people who are stuck at home in quarantine yes imagine like you're you're a lady who's stuck in quarantine for forever you know inside there so you know for the kids one yes we actually have an episode a little spoiler alert we'll say it during the commercial we have an episode about the teens we can talk about how much they help the teens but right now just this idea hit me of the fact that people who are in quarantine and that these women are quarantined unfortunately they would have been for the rest of their lives if not for the help of our listeners if not for the awesome work of Yad Lachem so go to saveaworld.org right now to help us out thank you so much Reb Nassanel and uh, we look forward to schmoozing you in a bunch of more episodes Bezat Hashem thank you so and much now, back to our episode I think those people that you're describing that like, they're like, I could give you the share on the moon. I could, I think the painful part here for them is that they're, they're, they want to do that. They're just waiting for it to be over. And when, and when we get the all clear, all clear and it's all over. So, so they'll bounce right back. But that's my point. My point is, is that what Hashem was showing them myself and so many other people is there is no over. There doesn't have to be an over. The, the medrash over there that says that, uh, that uh, it's not a medrash, it says outright, you know, every place that, the uh, 42 places, I don't have the Chumash Brian, but uh, all the places that Klai Yisrael stopped on the way to Eretz Yisrael, how many times they stopped, it was 42. And the, the medrash over there says that, uh, you know, why, why, why list every single place? There was not enough to learn from every single place. Why list every single place? Because, because that process is the reason we got into Eretz Yisrael. And without that process, we couldn't get in. We need to value the process, not the end story. Not the end story. And that's the, that's the difficult part, but that's the part that, that, that is everything. The whole point is to be able to, in the moment, not at the end, not when it's, not when it's no, presented to us, in the moment, be able to, and I think we did on the last season. I've done it a thousand times, but for me, it's the lollipop, uh, the lollipop theory that I love. That you know, when I would open up the lollipop for my son, he would lose his mind because I took it out of his hands to open it up. And um, someone emailed me. Right? <laughs> I'm not laughing at the person. It's good advice. It's just it's funny. Someone emailed me and was like, maybe you should give him another lollipop to hold while you're right. opening up the lollipop. Like that's a loser. I'm like. I don't think you understand. No, that wasn't. Yeah, I think you got what's going on. So the the but but the lollipop method is 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 or theory I I I love for this is because I want to ask myself not at the end. I want to ask myself during how many times has Hashem done this dance with us? How many times have we done this dance with Hashem? Really? How many times? And then at the end we're always like, oh, and it shows like I. I have you. But like, yes, no, 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 no. This is where I want to argue with you. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm taking a different go, approach. Go. There's not going to be an O and be okay with that. Right, 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 right. Okay, we're saying there may that. never. That's my point. That's the whole other problem. There may never be an O, but you know. No, no, it's not true. There is always an O. You just might not 
see the O. Fine, okay, but then, but, but then for you as a finite person, there is no right. O. Right, then what's the point of it? Is the point is, then the point is, is that in this moment, in this moment, my mind, my perception, my everything is too small. It's Robert Berkowitz's thing. Robert Berkowitz is, uh, I remember Robert Berkowitz one time saying, you know, whenever, he gets very uncomfortable when anyone ever starts giving to him for the Holocaust, uh. right? Which I think every human being on earth should get uncomfortable anytime anyone starts giving to him for the Holocaust, but fine. And, and so someone said, because we were talking about it for a while, and someone asked him, Sherry said, so Lamaisa, what's the answer? Robert Berkowitz says, I don't know. I have no idea how the Rabbani Shalom allowed millions of Yidin to, 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 to die. Like, I have no right. idea. But I do plan on asking him one day. I do plan on after 120. I'll be up there. I'll talk to him. Uz Yamale Shagpinu. Uz Yamale Shagpinu. Only I'm venters not, are I'm, mouths filled with laughter. Olive Zion, the number eight. We need to start eight. living like this. We need to start uh, living like and this. And I think this as is the lesson. Just, this, as opposed to just sitting back and saying that if it doesn't feel good, or if I can't construct this into a story, if I can't see that, then it's bad. It's not. There you it's go. It's not. It's not. I think the main, my, my message of, of, of COVID that I felt for me, it's not about you. It's not about you. It's not about you walking out with your story. It's not about you feeling good. It's not about you feeling comfortable. It's not about you being good. It's not about you. It's so big. It's so big. But you fit into it. If you could just get over yourself. There you, you go. You fit into it. Meaning that, Yasi, a person's, the new Gibar that I'm trying to talk about, the new Emuna and Bittachan that I'm trying to talk about is the oldest one ever. Somebody came over to me afterwards because I spoke about this thought and he put it so perfectly. An older man. You know, like people afterwards, people are asking, ask questions. There was an older man off to the side. And after I got done, he was like, Rabbi, can I talk to you? For I came running over. Yes, yeah, sure. He's like, no, no, calm. And he was very poised. And it was a very beautiful thing that he said. He was like, so from your whole speech, you're basically just saying, we should go back to the emunah that our parents had back in Morocco and in Persia when they just knew there was Hashem without an understanding. And I said, thank you for saying that. Yes, there was a time, there was a time that they just said, this is the Ratzon Hashem. And whether I understand it, whether I don't understand it, whether I have the stories, whether I see how it comes out in the end, there's Hashem who loves me and he's running this world. And the four pound noodle in my skull called a brain that's finite can't possibly understand or fathom the infinite and I'm okay with that i'm comfortable with that i find security in just saying i believe in you hashem and i don't have to know i think that's the anche knesa hagadoyla emuna now i'm trying to go for i think the emuna before 2019 give a look at most classes including probably my own where we would get up and say a story and the reason why this happened is because and we'd have a nice little bow and if they didn't then that girl never would have gotten married if they didn't they never would have no, no. and we were always busy giving to rootsim and hashem i think was yelling from shemayim saying i hate that story because you think you got it uh, <laughs> you didn't get it beautiful. That's not the end. That's, That's not the whole thing. Hashem is saying. You just sold me so short. You, you just sold seriously, my Seriously, you think that the reason why she missed cents. the bus was only just because she had to meet that guy and wow. get a shidduch? Wow. There's a wow. billion other reasons that you can't possibly fathom. Wow. And so therefore, Hashem went and tore it open. And Hashem said, give a look. Give a look what not understanding truly means. You're not going to get to the end of it, but I need you to be okay with wow. it. So that all the nice. other times that you thought you had an end to it, you don't. Hashem right. is that big, and that's what it means to make Hashem right. our king, I think. That right. Abishta. And we've been selling him short. Yeah. We've been selling him short. Where is if we fall? Some are thinking that my mind grasped it. Oh, I got I, it. I got it. That, that's why Hashem did it. Yeah. That's why Hashem yeah, did the it. The reason why we missed that's the plane, and that's... No. And if I get the uh in the speech, then great. Right. Then great. I did it. I did it. I spread I spread the greatness of the Rabbi Shalom. When Hashem is saying it's being like <laughs> I painted you a Rembrandt right. and you and you were just like, That's really cute. I gave him a compliment. I did Right. I, it was just like you know? <laughs> nice. You know, like imagine Rembrandt sees that his painting ends up on the box of Wheaties 
of like a cereal right. box. And they're like, right. look, you know, it's a nice picture. It's like, right. no, but, but, but it's a rent. You know, it's something. Hashem right. is just showing us that we can't understand. And I think that people should really start to focus on this. Being okay with not knowing. In a world of everything is information. In a world of everything is you have to know. In a world is everything is that you, you just have to be on top of. And, and that's a world that we have. That's okay. It's okay to be in that world of information. But we fall very short when it comes to applying that need for information when it comes to our amun and bitachan. Just and, stop and, and let go. And, and let's... Yeah, and let's and let's take that one step further. People will be like, "Oh, but that's scary. That's scary because we we you know then we're lacking." A, but you have to realize the other side. What about that is so comforting and calming, though? Then we stop that rat race of trying to figure everything out, and because that's real amuna. The real amuna is is for the positive and negative. The real amuna is is over here. And, and I just thought of this now, but I, I think it I think it rings true. The real Amun over here is not to tie him even with that positive, but to say it's so it's gonna even even that positive is nothing. It's gonna it's so much bigger than that. I need to just have Amuna. I need to just fully and absolutely in reality put my bitachan in there, uh. put my Amuna in there, and just say ah, it's it's so much. This is why you know it, it, whenever whenever I'm talking to my Talmudim about davening about davening for something specific, I'm like, wouldn't you rather to just daven? You know, I always tell them the first thing, right? Because everyone's uh, you know like kain or uh, whatever it is, put your tefillas in over there. I was like, if you're gonna, I like to tell them if you're gonna hyper focus on one part of davening, let it be maidim. Ooh, uh. Focus on maidim. Just really, really say maidim, and then when you get to like kain think to yourself, do you really need anything? If you really focused during Maidam on what you have, on what you're really more for. Yes, I want to ask you, did, really, huh, is this yours or you heard this from someplace? No, this is mine. So you were Machaventer of Shlema Zalman Orbach, who's told really? people it's an old Segula. He said, yes, an old Segula. It's not mine. It's not mine. <laughs> I'm, not, sorry. I'm, sorry, Zalman, I'm sorry. But an old Segula, an old Segula is when you get to Maidam, think of everything you have in life. And say thank you, thank you, right. thank you. He said it's Badik, wow. uh, he said it's Badika Manusa right, that if you mamish think I have a wife, I have children, I have a, you know, or whatever it is a person is, is happy with in life, he said that at the end when you talk ask for things, you're gonna be answered. Very good. Right. So so I I, I tell my guys that all the time that do it during Maidam. Like really and then when you get to like kinda of like think for a second. You really wanna ask for something right now, or or did you just like that back there? You want to go back over there and be like, wait, I would like to start counting back, <laughs> you know, to, to, to what I have. We, we have to be able to, to just say, hang on a second. I don't want to ask. I don't know if that's good for me. How many times have I done that? I hope I could. I wish this would work. I wish it. And then it does. And I'm like, ooh, I'd love to backpedal right now. You know, I don't know what's good for me. I have no idea. But that's the beauty of Amuna. That's the real beauty over there. And yeah, for sure. You know, COVID has, uh, has has introduced us to that in a very big way. In a very big way, and and I think I think if I could end the the concept off for myself, I, I think in a big way we were so lacking it. It was so so gone that a a, um, a patch on the hand wasn't going to do it. Because we thought us. before COVID, we thought we got this. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought we I was were right about so confident. I thought, I didn't think about it. All right, hold up right there. We're going to get right back to the episode. But I need to tell you about not just one of our sponsors, but something really incredible. TheDreamRaffle.com. Oh, how I dream. What a perfect name. What a perfect name. It literally is the Dream Raffle. That's it. A million dollar apartment in Eretz Yisrael. A million dollar apartment in Eretz Yisrael. I can't. I'm going to get emotional now just thinking about the moment if my name were called that I had that I would just absolutely. I can't. I can't even dream of it. But you could. We all can. The dreamraffle.com. The money goes to the amazing Am Yisrael Chai Foundation. They help out farmers with Shemitah and Eretz Yisrael. They help out kids at risk to help them into the IDF. There's so much good that they do. And the coolest part is 
Use our promo code. <laughs> we have a promo code called Two Cents. T W O C E N T S. Two Cents. You get ten dollars off. That's for the one cent, and you get buy one get one. That's the second cent. Two. You get two things. Ten dollars off and buy one get one. You get a bogo, and with that, you get to get your name inside there. TheDreamRaffle.com. I want you to dream of getting that million dollar raffle in Eretz Yisrael. I think we needed, it was more than a patch and the rest that we needed. We, in order to wake us up, we needed, we needed the full on surgery. We needed the full on lobotomy. We just, we needed that real, that realness of it. And, and in that way, where the government was right and then we were wrong, the whole world powers were just wrong about everything. Everyone that we trust and we're like, no, they, 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 they know what they're, you know, these people are conspiracy. All of a sudden conspiracy theorists became right. Right, right people became conspiracy theorists. It's it just, the whole world got flipped over and I think we needed that in order to get this idea because without that, we weren't going to get this. Yep. Yeah, I, I so, so to expect people now to be able to pivot, to expect people now, um, to be able to take what we just said now, because what we just said, pivot, p- sorry, sorry, pivarati, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, is, 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 is what uh, is what we want to go for over here. Uh, to be able to pivot right. in their own lives, it's my it's my new favorite word. Um, I don't think the word pivot has been used um, enough up until like recently. Enough. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. Do you remember people ten years ago using the word pivot? You got to pivot your life. No, no, no it's a no. new thing. No. I like recalibrate. Someone, someone just introduced me to that one. Yeah, recalibrate. But then I think of a computer going slow. It bothers me. It, it just, you know, it, 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 just, it just makes me want to just get upset at technology at that point. So to pivot our life, to pivot our life basically means right. that something is coming at us one way. And then we just learn to take that. How we pivot now with our emunah is starting to take in that. <sighs> You're going to have wow. questions. Here, let me put, 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 put it in the sense. Go. There are going to be questions that either will never start or will can't ever be answered. There are going to be questions that either will never start or can't ever be answered. Why, like Rev Berkowitz was saying concerning the Holocaust, and like we're saying now concerning all the people, unfortunately, who have suffered through this terrible, terrible plague of COVID. If you have an amuna that's so deeply seated within your mind and your heart that there's a Hashem and that he has something on so much bigger and I don't understand it and I'm okay with it and I can't possibly wrap my mind around it. If you go and you preface with that, then there's no questions because it's Hashem and I can't understand it. But if you come with a 2019 kind of an Amuna where we were still trying to figure out what God's doing all the time, so then you're going to have a lot of questions. Why is he doing it this way? To, and when am I waiting for the answer? And you're going to come out with no answers because there will be no answers that will ever be as good until until we get to that day that our mouths are filled with laughter until Mashiach comes and we can finally figure out those answers. So you can either live a life not having the questions or you can live a life with many unanswered questions. It's really your choice. Are you going to grab at pivoting this new emuna or not? So I think two points... Number one, two things I just thought of, and, and, and I think I've been feeling this for a very, I really appreciate Ari right now, this moment, and this conversation really because of this, because I think I really just, something just, just like clicked in me. Number one, where we were beforehand is we were pivoting. When Hashem was offering us to pivot us for us, he was like, I put this in front of you, it's to move. And no, they were like, no, I'm going to pivot when I want to pivot. Like, he's like, no, 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 I'm, I'm showing you, pivot. <laughs> Here you go, I'm going to do it for you. I know the whole track, I know everything. I'm going to pivot it for you. We've been wanting to pivot. And the, the next idea is we're like little children here. Just because something is a mystery doesn't negate it. In other words, when something's a mystery, we might say, we could say, you have the opportunity to say, I don't believe in that now, because I don't have all the answers to it. Or you can say, it's so much bigger, I don't have all the answers to it. The, the concept is so deep, it's so far-reaching, it's so large. A mystery isn't the end-all. The unanswered question is not the end-all. 
It's where you know to go now for depth. An unanswered question only hides more depth. The answer is more depth, not less. So to run away from unanswered questions saying, no, I don't believe in that or I don't trust in that, that's so childish and foolish. It's We're just, just immature. We're just serve ourselves by doing it's, that. It's, it's just immature. It's trying to pull the wool over your eyes and go back to what once to was. To be able to just say, I don't understand all of it. And I, I, I don't understand all of it because my real answer is Hashem. I'm not supposed to. If I could fathom him, then he doesn't exist. He, something about that tremendously just resonated and clicked with me on, on a very, very, very deep level that, that in the unanswered question is, the more, is that more depth, and it might be a spiritual depth, it might be a and depth more that's, security. that's infinite. And more security and more comfort and more hope. Right. You know, all of those feelings right. certainly do come to the fore when wow. you you have that. And that's a gift that Hashem, I believe, is giving us. So there's so much more to grow um, from what we have been uh, suffering through that um, it is a certain suffering to just say that once I can put it out of my mind and make peace with the fact that as a finite person I can't understand it and it's not just that that's okay but that's reality that's reality you're gonna find a certain calm inside that um, this is something that I believe people today need to really start to build need to really start to dig deep I think you and I are okay with a little bit more just because we saw our grandmother I mean, I was literally no, just about just to because say. we saw Mama, uh, our grandmother uh, that Yassi and I had the zechut when we lived in Israel to have spent uh, many years uh, with her, and we're talking about an emuna pshuta. We're talking about a simple emuna of just you don't understand. She would speak to Elio and Navi every day while she went and made those Moroccan fish balls. She would sit and right. just talk to him about it. Her, her bechad amazon. It was just it's something. It's that feeling of walking into her. You, ju I just learned a whole week in yeshiva, in Beis Medrash, learning three sedarim solidly, and I come into her house on Shabbos, and she could barely. She doesn't know what a gemara is. I say she could barely read. You walk in there and you're like she's closer to Hashem than I am. Yeah, that's just. Is it like she literally is closer to Hashem than I am. When I say closer, I mean I think he's sitting next to her right now, holding her hand closer to him than I am. And and we get so caught up in the noise that that Amuna Pshuta, that's so real, she never questioned anything ever. And and, and she was through a bunch, you know. She, she went through yeah. a, a lot, a lot in her life. And... Even the pain that she was going through at the end, she never said, how come Hashem, how come? She would sit and just kiss her to him and say, Kodesh Baruch Hu Gadol. You know, that's just all there is to it. And she was invincible because of that. She couldn't waver. Right. You know, there was right. nothing that also, threw her I feel her she away. knew things because she would say to me, she's like, I'm going through this pain so that you guys are going to, so that you guys get to live a uh, 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 longer, happier life. Yeah, like, like, there right. was a certain obviousness it's to the heart. Like, like she that understood that that was happening. There's generations and generations of people that are going to gain from her pain. A like, incredibly. It was, it was a given. Yep. And then I just want to tell everybody, uh, maybe to finish off today's episode, what the end was. Just I don't know if you know this story. Maybe you do. But um, right after she passed away, Toto Esther, who lives in Smat, um, she right. she had a dream a few days afterwards. Uh, if you heard the story that Mama, that our grandmother came to her in a dream. And she said she looked amazing. And Mama had keys. And she was saying to Tota Esther, I want to show you the palace that I live in. And these are the keys. And I want to show you the other palace that I have in Olam Haba. And these are the keys. And she kept on showing her and showing her. And I remember hearing that and, and she started to take her and Tonta Esther said no I'm not ready to come with you yet I'm not ready to come with you yet and she said okay you know we'll see you soon there's a palace for you too like and and, and and that was something now 
for Ashkenazim listening to this, I, I don't know how much you put into dreams, um, the Sfaradim, the Moroccans, for us, you know, on our phone. So we have a few certain things of communication. We have WhatsApp, we have our phone, we have text messaging, and then at night we have dreams. <laughs> Just the way that it goes yes. of communications uh, with each other. But to me, that like spoke volumes of a lady who never had uh, any kind of formal education, who was put through the fires of so many different lives, but that ultimately had an amuna peshuta that she never needed to know because why should she have to? Her Abba in Shamayim has got her and has taken care of her. So my end off is just, I give a bracha to everybody that we should build back to that amuna peshuta. We should pivot against everything that's happening in the world right now and that we should be thrilled, satisfied, comfortable, and humbled by the fact that we don't ever have to know because there's an Abba in Shemayim who's really there and taking care of us. Just you want to end off? We have about a minute left. Yeah, the I just I just want to repeat that that one part you just touched on, and that there's something so beautiful with embracing it. It's it's real emuna, real emuna is not just saying you know. After I did all this stuff, now whatever happens is up to Hashem. Like that, that's not how it works. Real Amun is when we go in, when we're while we're doing it, while we're saying the Rosh Hashanah is so much bigger than all this. My relationship with Him is so much bigger than all this. And when we realize that, there's a certain calm to, to to understanding that in reality, this is all here right now and might not be here in ten minutes from now. I just want to sit with Him right now. I just want to sit in that right now. It's such a beautiful way to live. It's such an absolute beautiful way to live. I know I'm going to get questions about, well, then, you know, what about our Hishtadlis? Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Meaning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah. 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 Good. But. Good. First, Good. master this, Good. though. First, get the I'd wax on wax off. Ask, I'd rather you ask. Or I'd, ra- I'd rather ask, what should I do for my Hishtadlis here? Rather than ask, where's the Rabbanu Shalom here? Right. Very good. Yeah. And so, Bezat Hashem, we should all be able to have that. And uh, looking forward, Amen. looking forward with Hashem's help to have another second season, the Two Cents Podcast. I'm Ari Ben Shushan. Welcome back. Right. I'm Welcome Ari Ben back. Shushan. It's my brother. Yassi Ben Shushan. Yassi Ben Shushan. Well, I don't think we did that, right? Let's let's, let's finish it off. Did you just right. outro? I did, did outro. You just outro for both of us. I am Ari Ben Shushan. <laughs> this is my brother. Yes, you mentioned. And we are the two cents. This is the two cents podcast. We really need, we are very rusty. Okay, everybody, have a great day. (laughs) All right, we're out.